Girls, it's Lacey and welcome back to our space. So I want to do a DIY for you guys and it's going to take a couple of days of filming and editing in my condition, but I want to use this 3D Reform. My mother had picked me up three of these and I thought it would be really cool to make something with this and I'm going to be utilizing some wood beads. I did get these from Amazon. I have 300 of the 16 inch ones that are in this cloudy bag that I actually absolutely love. These cost me about $10, I do believe, and then 200 of these 20 inch beads, and then I also have more beads here. I have a ton in my stash. These, I think, are 25 millimeter beads, but I'm not sure, but those are the three sizes that I'll be utilizing for this. So what we are going to want to do first is take this apart. They come apart easily, and each side has a little ring on it so you can hook them together as you can see right there. I'm going to be removing one of these rings from each one of the hoops and I'm going to leave one on. And then the last hoop doesn't have the rings. It has these little metal connectors that hold the rings on. I'm leaving both of these on there to hook them back together. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of these rings and get off the little um, metal part. I've already done that on some. It's not that hard. You can pull it off really well with um, pliers, but some of them stick a little and get a rough edge. I scraped them against the concrete in my driveway to try to get it off. And then eventually Chad came and filed it with a metal file that you can get at your hardware store. He has already in his tools. We didn't go out to get it. And it, he says they cost about a dollar. Okay, or once you have your ring where you don't have but one of the little circles on it, this one is missing from the bottom. And you can see that it's really neatly done. That's one of the ones that Chad did. Mine looks a little more rough on it. But what we're gonna do is we're going to take where they're connected and you can see where the wire is connected all the way around and we're going to just pull that apart and it's really easy believe me i have no strength right now and it will just literally snap even though i said it was easy it's gonna i'm gonna struggle for a second but it will snap if you bend it back and forth a couple of times like that and we're going to string beads on it Okay, so here's my first ring done. And the pattern from where the circle is in there all the way down to the bottom is the same until you get to the complete middle here. You only have two of these balls in between this set. So this pattern's a little bit different. You will see you have an extra larger one and not two balls just together with two larger ones, if that makes sense. From each of these balls all the way around here, it's the same until you're missing two balls here extra on the side. And you have a gap right here. That's where the ring is. You need to keep that gap in order for them to fit together. If you put a, your beads all the way up to where the ring is, there's going to be an extra tension to try to make it fit together. Now, what I mean by that is, you're gonna have this much left over. I'm hoping you guys can see that. That's how much is left over on this. And we need to reconnect them. But you can't just glue them together here with um, regular hot glue, which is what I'm gonna be using, and make it stay. So we're gluing them together like I did my heart shape uh, beat it ring and we're going to be utilizing some floral wire that I have here. This is thicker than what's at Dollar Tree. You can use the one at Dollar Tree. I just double it up to ensure that it holds. And I'm just gonna cut off a piece that's not super long, but long enough to put in between these wires. 
Then I'm going to add some hot glue to it and put it inside the beads. Now you want your beads to still be able to move a little bit initially so you can make sure you still have that gap. So what I'm doing is gluing the long side first and pushing it down and making sure that I still have just the edge out and then I'm going to glue the other side once I put the beads back on that fell off. And it's very flexible, you can do this easily. There you have it. The whole ring is together and we have a nice gap there where the circle is and you need that gap. So make sure you don't put so many beads on that will cover up that gap. So that's one done. Let me show you the next one. So here is my second one and it is the same pattern. Here's my circle and it's the same pattern all the way around until you get to the bottom here. Now it's different than the last pattern because I had these two beads at the end but then I still had a gap because it's a little bit bigger of a ring. So I added two smaller ones. I don't know what size these are. These are 16. I would guess that these would be 12 millimeters maybe that I had in my stash just as long as it's even all the way around because we want to utilize a middle at the top and the bottom and here at the bottom your middle is or this will be the top actually your middle is always going to be where that little ring is okay I've done all four of my circles this is the last one and it is the one that has the two ends that holds them all together now one of them is going to go through all the circles that we have on the end and the other one's going to go in between some of the pieces. So from this top is what I'm calling the top all the way down. The pattern is the same until you get down here. We have an extra one of these balls and then two of those and there is gap space so things fit between. So now I have all of my rings beaded and we are going to assemble them now. I'm going to you take the largest one here that has the prongs and I'm going to keep this at the top here and slide the first one on and then I'm going to turn it and slide it in between the beads that are at the bottom in the middle. So then it looks like this. Now that we have it all glued together, as you can see, I actually took some pliers and bent over the little peg that's in the bottom. I don't know if you can see how it's bent over. I actually don't have much strength right now, so I'm gonna have Chad bend it even more, but you want it flat or you could try to cut it off. I would just worry that you would cut off too much and the glue would come undone. I have some fairy lights and these are about 50 fairy lights I have on the string and I'm just going to take and wrap them around each one of the sections.
what my project looks like thus far. Now, the battery pack is just sitting in here, but I am gonna glue it down and I'm gonna make sure I can reach the on off switch from underneath. I think that's the best way to do it. Then what I'm gonna do is take some leaves and I have these that came off of this beautiful peonies that I had left over from another project. And I also have some of these that are from Joanne Fabrics earlier in the spring that I'm going to accent around the bottom so you can't see the battery pack as well. And then I'm gonna take this LED light from Dollar Tree that has this orangey kind of glow and I'm gonna place it inside of this beautiful peonies and then I'm gonna put the entire thing on top of the battery pack and glue it to the actual battery pack to make sure that it doesn't fly out or anything but I will be able to still open the battery pack and change out the batteries if I need to. And this is my bohemian style chandelier that is made from wooden beads and the Dollar Tree 3D reform. And I love how it turned out. As you guys saw, I cut all the reform apart and then put the beads on and glued it back together. And that is the hardest part of this entire project. I did show you guys how I took a piece of floral wire and put it in between and secure the wires back together that gives it a little more stability i did lose the footage however of where i went in and i glued the beads around that with some e6000 to ensure that they are going to stay i did use hot glue gorilla sticks but just in case i went in with e6000 Everything else on this either came from Dollar Tree, Joanne Fabrics, or my personal stash. And I do believe you can do this in any color you want and find all of these products probably online or at your stores once we are able to get out and go shopping for them. The fairy lights don't have to go on there. I like them, but you can see the wire and you can put a bigger LED light in there. Please do not burn a real candle in this because it is not fireproof. So I also took some ribbon and I made some big loops to hide where I tied the ribbons that hang down underneath. I did not show that footage because I did it afterwards because you could just barely see the battery pack. You could do foliage if you did not want to put loops, just add some more greenery or some more flowers. So that is it for this project. Please put any comments or questions you have down in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys so much for the well wishes and prayers you sent my way. I do appreciate it. I am recovering from the things we do not mention here on uh, YouTube and I do believe I will be fully mended probably in a week or so but thank you so much for every 
thing that was sent my way. I feel blessed. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, for liking, and always sharing my videos. And if you're not a member here at Lacey Space Chat, I don't know why not. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button, become a member, hang out with us for a while. We have a lot of fun here. We do a lot of cool things here. This one did take me about four days to make. However, I do believe you guys can do this in one day. I would, however, let the reform pieces dry for a couple hours before assembling the whole thing. Also, if you like, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Lacey Space, the same way that it's spelled here. And I will catch all of you in my next video. Bye, loves.